Hello everyone, my name's Lewis. I'm a second year astrophysics student studying in the UK. And recently I've had a few people ask me what textbooks I've used in my degree and what textbooks I'd recommend other students who are currently pursuing or thinking of pursuing a degree in physics and astrophysics use. So I've put a list together of five textbooks that I've personally used and found beneficial throughout my degree. And hopefully if you are one of those students who is looking for textbooks in the fields of physics and astrophysics, you'll be able to use this video as some sort of guidance um, and hopefully you find it useful. So I've put links in the description to um, Amazon where you can buy the textbooks. They are Amazon affiliate links, so if you do decide to buy books through the links, I'll get a little bit of a cut. Um, and also I've put timestamps as well, so you can skip along through the video to whichever textbook or field you are most interested in studying. So hopefully you find this video useful, and let's get straight into the first recommendation. So the first textbook I'm going to recommend is Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering by Riley Hobson and Benz. Um, as the title suggests, this is a maths textbook for physics students and engineering students. Um, and if there's one textbook that I think you should buy more than any in this list, it's definitely this one. This is probably the most useful textbook I've ever used. Um, and the reason for that is because it's got all the maths that you're going to need in an undergraduate physics degree. Um, and it's written in a way where there's enough um, explanation so you can understand the topic, but enough practice questions and examples um, so that you can practice the maths itself. Um, obviously doing maths is a massively important skill in physics it's probably the most important skill so having strong maths skill set is um, vital um, and a textbook like this is a really great tool for sharpening that skill set um, this specific textbook is i think probably the standard textbook for most universities around the uk um, i know a lot of universities use this especially in first year um, but I like to keep a copy of this even through second and I will keep it for my third year um, because it covers a lot of the maths you're going to do then. Um, and not only that, usually in second and third year you don't have as much maths specific modules um, just dedicated to the maths you're going to use. So you don't perhaps get to practice your maths as much as in first year. So this is a great tool for being able to um, hone in on your skills and brush up on any maths that you perhaps have gone a bit sloppy on or you just forgot, um, which I do quite a lot. And it's just a great tool for being able to practice your maths. You know, they say that maths is the language of physics. And if that's the case, this is definitely the dictionary of physics. So for the next textbook, I recommend a general physics textbook. And for that, I would recommend Principles of Physics by Halliday, Resnick and Walker. This is probably the most useful textbook I had in first year. Um, I know I said I used um, maths methods quite a lot, but in terms of the actual content that I learned, this is definitely the one that I most benefited from in first year. Um, this is, like I said, a general physics textbook. And what I mean by that is that it covers um, a lot of the topics that you're gonna do in your physics undergraduate degree, especially in the first year. Uh, so it goes through things like classical mechanics, um, it's got some electromagnetism, thermodynamics, um, a little bit of optics, and it's even got some relativity in there as well. So it's got a lot of content, and as you can see, it is quite a chunky and beefy check, uh, textbook. Um, I particularly enjoyed this because it's got some nice diagrams and explanations, but more than that, it's got really nice practice questions um, that a lot of people have solved online. So you can often search up the solutions to these textbooks without having to um, actually go and buy the solutions textbook. Um, and so it's, a, it's quite useful for doing um, practice questions, which is probably the best way of actually revising and studying physics. Um, as I said, the, the, it doesn't cover quantum mechanics, but if you're using this for first year, which most uh, students will be, uh, this is actually a really useful uh, textbook because you don't tend to do a lot of quantum mechanics in first year. Um, but as I said, this gets a little bit less relevant throughout the years. Um, so in my second year, I've used, used this considerably less than my first year. Um, and I doubt I'll use this much, if at all, during my third year. Um, but if I had to guess, I'd say about 80% of my first year modules had some content covered in this textbook. And uh, maybe three, two or three of them were actually based off this textbook. So um, it was a useful textbook for me. And I know a lot of universities around the UK actually use this, especially in their first year. 
So as I said, Principles of Physics covers a lot of the topics that you're going to do during a physics or astrophysics degree, but the one topic it doesn't cover is quantum mechanics, and so when I had my quantum mechanics course, I got the uh, Feynman Lectures in Physics Volume 3 Quantum Mechanics textbook by Richard Feynman. Now, even if you um, are doing an astrophysics degree, you're almost certainly going to have at least one module in quantum mechanics. It's one of those cornerstones of physics that's just important to know. Um, and so for a lot of people, it is a difficult subject to pick up and it is hard to conceptualize the ideas in the topic. But I found that this textbook explains it so easily and so well that I never really had that problem. Um, Richard Feynman was probably the best science communicator ever. And this textbook was actually based on a first year undergraduate um, quantum mechanics course, which he taught at um, Caltech. So it's perfect for undergraduate, especially if this is your first time studying quantum mechanics, like it was for me. I found it really easy to pick up some of the ideas that I know other people may have struggled with. Um, and this actually allowed me to do quite well in my quantum mechanics course, better than I thought I would have, and definitely better than I would have been able to do without this textbook. Um, the explanations in there are really easy to follow um, and the conventions that he used is usually quite um, similar to the conventions you use throughout all of quantum mechanics, um, especially in the modern time, um, which is also really useful, especially if you're cross-referencing things. Um, but the only downside to this textbook that I found is that there's not too many exercises like you'd find in other textbooks. Um, it is a downside, but it's not a big of a downside as perhaps if it was in a maths or a classical mechanics textbook because there's not too much um, new maths you need to keep practicing for quantum mechanics, at least I found anyway. A lot more of it was just the ideas and the theory behind the ideas in quantum mechanics. So, um, and that tech, this textbook actually explains those really well, which is why I found it so easy to follow. So if you are looking for a quantum mechanics textbook, I would definitely recommend this, especially if it's your first time actually um, picking up the topic. Um, I do know that there's other quantum mechanics textbooks that are quite good, like I believe there's one by Griffiths, which is also aimed for first time undergraduate students studying quantum mechanics. Um, I never found the need to get another textbook because this one was so well written and so easy to follow. And it does cover basically all of quantum mechanics, especially all the quantum mechanics you're gonna need for a undergraduate degree. The next textbook covers another important field in physics, which is thermodynamics. Um, and that textbook is Concepts in Thermal Physics by Blendell and Blendell. This is a really nice, well-written textbook, one of my favorites to actually read because um, of how nicely written it is. It also covers a lot of the history behind the discoveries in thermodynamics, which I find pretty interesting. Um, but the most important thing, and probably the most beneficial thing from this textbook is the um, practice questions that it's got in the back. Um, so not only does it have practice questions, but it has some solutions to the practice questions as well. So it's really easy to follow along if you um, struggle with a certain topic in thermodynamics. Um, and perhaps you want to just check whether you're getting the answers right, which a lot of textbooks don't include the answers, and so you don't really know if you're going right or wrong. Um, it also covers a lot of the practical uses of thermodynamics and how it's used in the real world, um, which I've always found pretty interesting and a useful thing to have in textbooks because when I can see how things are used and see how things work, um, it's easier for me to visualize and, and conceptualize the um, ideas and topics. So I found this really useful. I can't really give too much of a, a biased review, I guess, if you want to say that, because I'm currently still using it. So I haven't actually read through all of the chapters that I'm um, studying this semester. Uh, but it is used for my thermal and statistical physics module, and I know that a lot of those modules across the UK use this textbook. Um, it's another pretty standard textbook, like I said. So um, if you are studying thermodynamics for the first time, then I would definitely recommend this textbook. And the last textbook I'm going to recommend is one in astrophysics. Now, I don't actually have a physical copy of it because I, I, I'd either take it out of the library or more recently, I've just got a PDF version on my iPad, which allows me to highlight it quite easy. Um, and that textbook is an introduction to modern astrophysics by Carol. Um, I found this textbook really useful and really interesting. It covers all of the topics basically from um, the very basics of astrophysics all the way up to extragalactic extra astrophysics, um, galaxies, black holes, and um, stuff like that, which is really exciting stuff. Uh, I found it in some places a bit dry, um, 
but perhaps that's because I've already done research and, and already uh, have quite a bit of knowledge on those topics from previous modules. Um, but it is a textbook that covers everything basically that you're going to do in astrophysics at an undergraduate level. So there are going to be topics that you cover multiple times and from multiple textbooks. So you could expect that in a big textbook like this. It is like principles of physics in that it covers a wide range of topics in astrophysics. And so if you are looking for like a general astrophysics textbook, I'd recommend an introduction to modern day astrophysics. So I hope you found this video useful. As I said, I've put links in the description to where you can buy these textbooks if you want to pick them up yourself. Um, one note though is that this is my personal recommendation. You may find that other textbooks are more beneficial to you. I've just found these to be the most beneficial and a big reason of that is because my courses are based mostly on some of these textbooks. So the best thing that I could recommend for you to do is to check with your modules, uh, check with your module organizers, for which textbooks they recommend and which textbooks they're basing their course off because those textbooks are probably going to be most useful for you um, especially if your module is actually based off one textbook um, but other than that i just want to say a massive thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video i'd appreciate it if you give a like and if you want to watch more content uh, make sure to subscribe for more videos in the future uh, but with that being said i want to say thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye